<laughs> Let's get to the next preview uh, of the Eels and the Cowboys game tomorrow night um, right here on Fox League. Now, this is a big game, obviously. Uh, who do we have favourites here? Who do we think is in the, the best chance of winning this game? And well, I suppose it's a pretty big game, isn't it, for Peyton as well? It's a massive game. Oh, it's a massive game for Both Brad Arthur, too. Yeah, Both yeah. coaches have got a lot riding on this game for different reasons. Look, I think Cowboys are deserved favourites, but I, I really like Parramatta in this game. Mm. I just think Parramatta, the way that they're so aggressive and physical through the middle, uh, we've seen the Roosters a couple of times this year really turn the Cowboys inside out by just punching through the middle. Cowboys like to spread it a little bit defensively, mm. uh, and, the, and the Roosters exploited that, and I think Par that's Parramatta's game. Mm. When Parramatta mm. on song, they didn't do it last week, ironically, against mm. Canberra, but that was horses for courses. This week, I think they'll go straight through yep. the guts. All right, we're going to have Todd Payton on the show shortly, and we will ask him about his coaching deal. Is he closer to signing a new deal with the Cowboys? Uh, Buzz brought it up last night. $2 million over three years, is that cheap? What's he worth? Well, I can't see Todd Payton going anywhere else, given the job that he's done up in North Queensland over the course of the last couple of seasons. Look, $2 million over three years. If he went to the open market, Braith, he may well end up with a million dollars per season if the Cowboys continue mm. to kick on and, and make true. the grand final. I think that's a great deal for the Cowboys, but I also think from Todd's point of view that he strikes me as the type of coach who he is prepared, he's happy, his family's settled, he's got his team playing great football. I don't think it's all about money for him. Mm. Yeah, but the premiership coaches, yeah, the, the big guns, right? They're, they're all million dollar coaches. Yeah. Mm. Todd Payton's in his second season, he's got them to, so far, within a game of the grand final. He's certainly changed a lot of things up there. His ability to purpose pick players to bring into the squad to make them better. The Townsends and the Deardens and the well, likes. But is he worth well, pulling the trigger now? Well, is he, no, is no, he no, worth really pulling the trigger yeah. now? Yeah. Here, I sit back, back with my, yeah. with my I hand. Mean, I mean, is it worth committing? I mean, it's at, at, for the, two, $2 million dollars for three years, I'd say yes. Lock him in now. But if he's asking for a million dollars or 900 are you pulling the trigger now and, and, and keeping him? He could bow out tomorrow night. Who know, are they going to back it up next year? There's, there's still a few questions. It's not there's like no it's questions. proven. There's no it's proven. So yeah, if he says a yeah. million dollars now, three years, what do you say to that? I think, I think Cowboys have been so well coached mm. that I put nearly all their success down to what Todd okay. Payton. I, think if, I don't think there'd be five coaches around in, in Australia, in the, in the world, who could do what, what Todd Payton started. Look, I don't think he's worth a million dollars yet, but if I'm Todd Payton, I'm, I'm not rushing this deal. What, what, what constitutes a million dollar coach? Premiership winning coach. Premiership winning, OK. So he's got a... Well, there you go. Yeah, I, that's, I that's think... What, that's that, what that's I, my that's what I, I was thinking that too, yeah. right? But see, I look, the flip side I look at is if the Cowboys don't win, I don't think it's going to come down to any lack of coaching. Yeah. I, oh, I, no I, doubt. Yeah, no, you're right. No, well, you go back on. to the beginning of the season, plenty of people had the Cowboys tip for the wooden spoon. And to mm. Kenty's point from earlier, you look at the way we all criticised a lot of their signings. Like, they went and signed Chad we Townsend on $700,000 a season. Everybody went, what are they doing there? Like, he, he finished yeah. up, he couldn't make the Warriors starting all, side all of last us, all of us season. Tommy Dearden, right, yeah. was another kid who had later. shown <laughs> talent at the Brisbane Broncos, but had been on this losing run and hadn't really been able to get to where everybody thought that he would in terms of the development of his game. But... All of it comes back to the fine art of good coaching and yeah. Todd Payton's clearly shown in spades right. this year that he's got it. He deserves it. He deserves a, a good deal and a, and a nice upgrade. Now, the Eels finals disasters over the years, can they just put this to bed? Can they put it to bed? I know we talk about it a lot, but it is what it is. Let's have a look at that. 2017 fourth out in straight sets, 2018 wooden spoon, 2019 fifth out in week two, 2020 third out in straight sets, 2021 sixth, and out in week two. It's been a bit of a disaster. They've got there easily over the years, but they just can't get the job done. Yeah, they've been a perennial uh, top eight side, obviously, except for that one season there. Uh, uh, look, I, again, Brad's done a good job. I, and I've said this, and I'll say it again. Nobody had Parramatta as their premiership winner. Well, yeah, very I few. I disagree with you. There were people who tipped oh, them. I remember at the start of the season. Come on, we'll need to question them now. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't, I just think Parramatta right now are sitting par. They are sitting par right now, and I, I think if they make the grand final, he's in, he's done better than, you know, he's done what Parramatta fans hope, but, but done better than what most league fans would assume. 
and certainly a, a premiership. I think they've actually got over that, that slump. The slump was getting past week two. They, mm. They've done that now. So I think we'll see them play with a little bit more freedom. And, and a, a free Parramatta side is a dangerous Parramatta side. So I think I, I'm with Kenty. A top four was par. So mm. I, I think they, they've had a decent year. Yeah, they need to kick on from here, Mick. Like they've put themselves in a position. They finished in the top four. They need to kick on from making the prelim into a grand final and try and smash what's now the longest premiership drought in the history of the NRL. And it's not only on Brad Arthur, the coach. It's on this playing group. Like This particular yes. group, their senior players, as that list on the wall there at the moment underlines and highlights, yeah. they've had ample opportunity. So it's not on Brad Arthur at the moment. Mm. It's up to the players now. They need to deliver. Well, everyone's talking about Mitch and a few other players and other clubs circling. But if you're Parramatta and they lose this game and it's a convincing loss after the last few years, they, they're going to be questioning, do they re-sign these players at the money they would demand and want if they're not going to bring them a pre premiership? They, they need to look maybe elsewhere. Right? Well, I think that's a legitimate concern. I think that's something that Parramatta, if, if they get knocked off this weekend, mm. they have to go away and think, OK. I remember, and I, I remember when Canterbury, when Des first made the grand final with Canterbury and they nearly got there and everybody at Canterbury, OK, let's just... Hold it together and, and we'll go again. They got there in 2012. They, hunt, they got again in 2014. Yep. And you talk to people at the club after that and they said, in hindsight, after 2012, that's when they needed to start the rebuild because they let everyone just get a little bit too old. They lost too many good players underneath them and they just... The, the, the starting position from the rebuild was too far back. Mm. Whereas Parramatta, they, they might have to just make some really tough calls here mm. and say, you know what, you guys... This isn't the squad that's going to cut it for us. A, a bit like when the Roosters had Mitchell Pearce as their halfback mm. and Cooper Cronk became available mm -hmm. and they went out and they, it shocked everybody because Mitchell Pearce was a, a quality halfback. But what, what did it do? It mm. got them two premierships. Yeah. And, and that, that's the sort of tough call Parramatta might need to make. Mm. Not a knock on the players who are there, but they're just, as a group, are just yeah. not quite getting it there. At, up until now, the next yeah. week and a half might change that. Yeah.